Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well, this is the first view, is a no budget review is being filmed at a racing circuit. And uh, here we are at Donington Park uh, with Mr. Hunter from the Jeff Bice Cars channel. Uh, leader Matt Master somewhere around, but that's not really the focus of today. As you can see, we've got two 850s today. Uh, this one is a 2.5 20 valve. They're both N Reg, but of course, uh, the focus of today's video is this 1995 850 2 litre 10 valve. This is actually a base model 850. They came out, I think, the month before these were registered. I think July 95 was when the base model 2 to 10 valve came out. So there's not much sort of going on here. I don't know if these are the original wheels on this on this car or not. They might have been changed. This car was owned by Practical Classics for some time. Um, and actually, it's in okay condition. Brakes, steering, that sort of stuff is, is good. We have got the usual uh, A50 problem though on this front wing. The last A50 we filmed, also owned by Mr. Hunter from Jeff Buys Cars, had, a, had a, all the um, front wings rusty too, as you can see there and there. Once they go, there's nothing you do about it, you need to change the, uh, the wings. Considering this car's done 285,000 miles though, I think we'll forgive that. Even the bootstraps actually still work on this. You've got a little bit of ice on here because, uh, yeah, it wasn't fun this morning trying to demiss this car the locks were totally frozen as well so if you are going to use your 850 in winter and your key fob's not working make sure you have a kettle of water handy so the boot is absolutely huge it's not as big as a 940 and 960 but this is not as large a car as one of those amazingly this both these cars the struts are working which is crazy he's not got much interior in here so we'll, we'll continue with this one this one's actually got seven seats which is wonderful so we can lift up this bit see the uh, um, see the back rest is there actually got space underneath here so today we've been asked um, to uh, uh, not have any loose items of things we've not got a spare in here there would normally be a spare in there um, but you know on this floor storage if you don't have a spare wheel which is probably recommend you to have so yeah nice and flat sill for loading we should really have a low blind in here but um, we don't I don't think the fittings for it actually are uh, just here um, but this car doesn't got one of course Mr. Hunter's got no interior so he's not got one either my rear heater is not working which is a bit annoying but there we go you'd be pleased to know that um, this car over here was actually half no budget of money. that's 500 pounds this one this one was a little bit more it's actually exceeding the budget by 50 pounds which uh, you know is um, you know, just the way that it goes sometimes. So we'll take a look inside. So base spec, we haven't got much spec really in here at all. We've got electric windows, but they're only in the front. We have got heated seats, but I don't think they work in this car anymore. Um, for some reason, the ignition barrel has gone a bit rusty. So we've got a mechanical monometer, the later V70, uh, which was effectively a facelift of one of these, but came out um, severely 97 in this country. Uh, that's got an electronic one. This has got a, a, a mechanical one. Sometimes they stop working actually on 850. This one still works. So just on 285,000 miles. I have reset the clock in this. Stereo unfortunately doesn't work. I need to code, which is annoying. But there we go. I haven't even got the uh, key in, so we can't see. It says code, so I can't show you. We have got a graphic equaliser in here, which is uh, which is good fun. And some presets and a tape deck with RDS. We've also got uh, dual zone heating. It's not climate control or anything. There's no air conditioning in this car. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a base model of no trim level. So these are the seats though, and we, there are the buttons for the 
electric windows and the electric mirrors. We've got a little something in there. Yeah, that's the cup I had to use to defrost the car today because uh, lo lovely, lovely ice, and I had to get some hot water to do it from the hotel. Uh, we've actually got some part leather seats in this, which is interesting, considering this is a yeah, 850 with no trim level. I have checked. Um, I've also realised we've got a slight water leak as well, which is why there's stuff dripping on my head. Uh, but yeah, fog lights are on here. We've got two fog lights in this car for some reason. I think you could get a lot of extras on these. Electric sunroof swap, which I'm not touching. I don't actually know what that does. I think that might be uh, the spot lights maybe that someone's fitted aftermarket to this car. Uh, heat is not too bad for an old car. One thing you, you'll see in an 850 is that actually the uh, door handles on the inside are recessed, so you can't, um, you know, sort of hurt yourself in an accident. Same with like a 940, I think, as well. The door bins are really, really small, but not as small as the ones which are on um, my S40, but they are quite small. We've also got two vents here, so we've actually got a, five vents in the dash. Uh, glove box. I don't think get the secret documents there. We got some documents from Mr. Hunter, but secret documents unfortunately are not going in. Uh, we've got lumbar support as well, which is good. Um, that's I think a height adjuster. Nice comfortable seats. I mean, this is this is this is actually um, got a little bit worn. I think actually, uh, I, obviously, I, I like the A50s. I think these are great cars. This one because it's got the standard suspension on it, uh, actually does. Um, ride and handle a little bit better than the last one which had coilovers so what we'll do now is we'll have a look under the bonnet and see what little beast actually lies beneath so underneath the bonnet of this one is the least powerful 850 they ever made and um, we could talk about this is uh, 125 horsepower to 2 litre 10 valve version of all those uh, legendary white block engine. They made a 4, 5 and a 6 cylinder. This is a 5 cylinder. Um, they're much more reliable than the, uh, the T5 versions. Uh, the T5 versions can have catastrophic oil leaks and problems with the PCV system. So if you're buying the T5 or the R or the T5R because all three versions do exist but just be really careful about that sort of thing get some maybe specialists to check it because both Mr Hunter and I have had T5 engine Volvos on this P80 platform which is a platform that uh, the C70 Mark 1 V70 Mark 1 the S70 and the A50 used um, and uh, neither of them went well <laughs> so just be aware of that but yeah, you can see Cooler Reservoir has been changed, it's quite common for these to break. It's not too difficult to find a, a replacement one. Um, no turbo on this, so pretty easy to service. You must do the cam belt though. Cam belt, I think on these is about every 8 to 10 years or 100,000 miles from memory. Um, I might be wrong about that. But yeah, brakes are just in front of there. Headlock wipers are on this car. I have no idea if these work. They probably don't. <laughs> but they didn't work on my C70. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it under here. Let's just close that. So no headlight wiper racks because I don't think they work. Right, we better get in the back actually. That's one where we've not been yet. So let's uh, see how practical the back of is. I imagine very practical. So we've just got windy windows in the back of here. So that's my driving position and I'm about 5'11". So if I took that stuff out of there, I'd be fine to put my feet under there. Uh, it'd be really nice to have a cigarette lighter or something there, but we don't have that. Very comfortable. You could get an integral booster seat in the middle as well. This car doesn't have it. Um, so we've got a child sitting there effectively with my helmet I'm going to need later on. Um, but yeah, same sort of story as the front. We've got these some nice fabric inserts here. We've also got um, the... Uh, safety style interior door handles, windy windows. Is that the same winder that was in my, my mother's 240 back in the day? I don't know. Possibly. Um, yeah, very comfortable. Plenty of headroom because of the square shape. And uh, yeah, you, you know, I'm surprised actually we've got part leather interior on a base model, but we did. <sighs> nice to see two map pockets in the back too. And you can, if you want to, just move around a bit. You can actually put that middle headrest down so that uh, you don't have the problem that you can't see. But actually, visibility in this car is superb. 
one of the few cars I've driven recently where I just think, well, I don't need parking sensors in this. One thing I forgot to point out, actually, at the back is uh, the lovely, lovely rear lights on the A50 estate, which um, was sort of a, a design idea that first came around in the early 70s for the Renault 5. But at the time, they didn't actually have technology to make the light that went all the way down, so they had to have quite small ones. Whereas on this, they were all the way down. And I think it looks fantastic. Whether this spoiler will do anything at all for my track driving, I don't know. Um, but uh, there we go. Right, that's quite enough. I think my driving section of my view is going to have to be somewhere that's not on the track. So here we are on the A42, it's the next day after the track day and um, I have to remember to slow down a little bit from yesterday. So it's not that hard to slow down in this car particularly. Um, this is the 2 litre 10 valve engine with 125 horsepower, which was the least powerful A50 made. It does not to 60 in 11 and a half seconds when new. It's okay for cruising, I mean I could do with some cruise control but we're in a base back car so we don't have it. More exciting would be the 20 valve version of this engine which generates 143 horsepower. That was actually the engine the A50 was launched with in this country in 1992. It was only available initially, I think, in a GLT spec, then SE. I almost bought an 850 SE 2-litre 20 valve actually last year, but um, I couldn't quite negotiate um, with the owner who had it for about, oh dear, almost 30 years, um, effectively, so we didn't buy it in the end. This is saloon, that one. The next engine actually replaced the 2-litre 20 valve, that was the 2.5 10 valve engine. It actually displaces somewhere like 2.435 cc's and it actually was rebadged at 2.4 later on when the V70 P1 came out in 1997. Um, a little bit later on they, they changed the um, name from 2.5 to 2.4, about 99 I think we did that. Uh, but it was the same engine. Uh, that generated about 140 horsepower. I bet figures anywhere between 138 and 144 horsepower for 2.5 10 valve. The one that lots of people like is the 2.5 20 valve with about 168 horsepower. Uh, that's a nice, good, flexible round engine without the sort of added complexities of the turbo. Talking of turbos, there was also actually turbocharged version of that engine available in this country, only available with the all-wheel drive version of the 850. That generated 193 horsepower. Then we get into the really serious stuff. First of all the T5, um, very famous as being the engine used in the 850 uh, police cars. Uh, that generated 225 horsepower from 2.3 litres. Then we get into the T5R. Now that generated 227 horsepower, but actually had an overboost function of 240 horsepower. The R was the um, most powerful A50 made. It generated uh, 240 horsepower in the automatic version and 250 horsepower in the manual version. There are also some diesels available. But, as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Looking at specifications, Volvo in the mid-1990s actually went through this period where you could have any trim with any engine. If you wanted a 2-litre 10-valve CD model, you could have it. If you wanted a T5 turbo with base specification, i.e. no specification, like this one, 
um, you could have it. It was a bit strange. It didn't last, I don't think, until right at the end of production of the A50 in sort of early 97. But it was, you know, interesting. Other trim levels were S, which had alternated with no trim level as the base model. It's a bit difficult to work out sometimes, you know, when S started and when no trim level started. I've heard different things about that. Then SE, which was the base model initially. Then we get into the more exciting stuff, like the GLE and CD models, which are more luxurious. Uh, those are my favourite viewers. And um, then the GLT, which is probably most of the people's favourites. The all-wheel drive version of its own trim level, as did stuff like the T5R and the A50R. Actually, this car is quite sophisticated for all the time. It's very different underneath something like a 240 or 740. And really, when this car came out in 92 in this country, the United States came out in 1993, the um, things that it replaced were the 240 and 740, really. My 40 continued in production um, for some time. Actually, I think it outlasted the A50, which is really strange because it's very much sort of like a, a facelifted um, uh, 740 really and we've got front wheel drive a transverse five cylinder engine a uh, wonderful thing called the uh, delta link rear axle which is kind of um, the reason these cars handle so well but in this car looks a little bit knackered that's why it's sitting down a little bit where it shouldn't be and actually the steering is really good the steering in these is better than the C70 that these are based on and I know that because I've driven three C70s and I used to own one which was a T5 and for some reason the steering in this is better which is really odd I mean I wish for a bit more power um, the 20 valve version 2 litre would probably do me fine or Maybe one of the 2.5s, I mentioned from the 2.5 um, 10 valve, another car that used to belong to Mr. Hunter from Jeff Bice Cars Channel, and uh, that was considerably faster than this. But yeah, it feels very sort of stable and steady with 285,000 miles on the clock. I just ticked over 285 whilst filming this video actually. Um, and it's a really good motorway car, actually, they perform very well on the track as well. If you are a competent driver on track, which I realised yesterday, but I am not particularly. And I'll put the videos um, of what happened on that day in the description below. So viewers, the Volvo 850. Obviously we've tried one of these before, um, but this 2 litre 10 valve version this is a car that you should consider for your hard earned budget of up to £1,000. Well, I don't see why not. I mean, if you don't mind some cosmetic imperfections, and this car has many cosmetic imperfections, actually, they can be quite long-lived. I've heard of mileages of something like 750,000 miles on one of these engines. And, uh, you know, the rear suspension of this car is a little bit tired. Um, the interior is quite tired. But it started when it was below zero this morning and uh, it got me to the track so uh, you know that is um, something that is uh, worthy of note and uh, you know they actually drive quite well for an old car like this particularly with all the space in there and you can get much more exciting versions than this but uh, yeah I'd, I'd probably spend a little bit more maybe two to three thousand pounds and get a bit of a nicer one that's just my kind of preference but uh, there we go thank you again to mr hunter for lending me this car and thank you to uh, all of you who are watching don't forget to subscribe to the channel like this video comment below and uh, we shall see you again soon for some more inexpensive motoring